first thing I think we should talk about is what is worship? What I like to define it as is worship is telling God's story. Worship is about exploring who God is and what he's doing and telling that story over and over again into our hearts and our lives. There is this whole narrative of the gospel from creation to when Christ returns that we are going to tell that story, that God made everything, that he put humanity in this world to, you know, spread his glory, but humanity didn't quite do that the way he intended, and so there's this fall. But in Christ Jesus, we have this salvation that's offered. Jesus died, he rose again, you know, he ascended into heaven, and he's going to return. So worship is about getting together and celebrating that story. In order to worship, we need to know who God is. I always talk about God's nature, his character, and his work. So nature of God is like, what is it that makes God, God? You know, that's the things like he's all-knowing, he's all-powerful. He is just of a different order of, of existence than us. Then there's his character, his his personality expresses. Those are the things that, you know, we understand that worship is not just about an impersonal force in the universe, but that God is a, a, a real being that we interact with, right? And so his character is like, he's loving, he's kind, he's gracious. And he does have things that cause him displeasure, that he wants to judge or correct in us. So our God is, uh, you know, has these attributes that we can know and understand. And then there's also his work that, he actually is involved in our world. He's involved in our lives, that he reaches into history and does things. And, you know, scripture is our record and our reference of that. The scripture tells the story of what God has done in the world. And it's through his action in history, through his interaction with people, Israel and now the church and us today, that we get to know who he is, what it is that is, there is about him. And that's how we are able to worship. And that's why scripture has to be at the foundation of worship. Scripture is what helps us know and gives us that sure foundation so that we worship correctly. Without scripture, we could worship anything. We could fashion all kinds of idols out of our own, you know, desires or, you know, purposes. But scripture is what grounds us in worshiping the true God, the one God of the universe and how he has revealed himself. So worship is fundamentally about telling God's story. And, and that's ironic because most of us, I think, think of worship as music. It's about getting together and singing a bunch of songs. And that definitely is a part of it, but it's much bigger than that because we're going to do all kinds of things in response to what God has done. You know, we're going to praise him because he is wonderful. We are going to say thank you to him because he has done things that we should be thankful for. We're going to say sorry to him because there's been times when we've crossed his design and his plan for the universe. And we want to make sure that uh, we are in right relationship with him. So there's so many different things that we do in response to God. And, and the Bible gives us examples of all of these different people and their relationships with God. And that gives us a model of how to relate to him. Now, I also want to say that music is important, right? Because uh, all of life is in some form artistic. And, you know, everybody is in some way an artist. You can tell this because like when we went into isolation over COVID, nobody went home and was like, wow, well, it's time for me to pick up on my math skills, right? It's amazing how many guitars got sold over COVID. How many people went home to learn how to play piano? They've filled their time with artistic and aesthetic things because that is just how we express ourselves. And art is a more integral part of our world and our existence than we tend to think. And it's not because we need to have this decorative part of our world. It's, art is not just decoration. Art is about communication. Art is another language that we use to process and understand the world and understand ourselves and to communicate that. Everything that we create, even an artistic thing, whether it's a song or a painting or taking a picture or even shooting a video, whatever, that is a way that we are trying to capture an idea and pass it on. And that's what we're doing in worship is we're interacting with the big ideas of the universe of who is God and how do we respond to him and what does he want from us? So the arts are just so capable of bringing ideas out into the real world and actually expressing them in some ways better than just like the bare thought itself. For example, like when you use the word shout, you're like, 
If I actually shout, that gives you a better descriptor of what I'm trying to do. I'm giving you a more faithful representation, an artistic representation of what I'm trying to do. When I whisper, when I, when I talk softly, you know, that tells you something differently than when I'm just talking at regular levels. Yip Harburg, he's an American uh, songwriter, famous for writing all kinds of classic American songs. And he said this, he said, words make you think thoughts and music makes you feel a feeling, but a song where words and music come together makes you feel thoughts. And that's what we wanna do with music in worship. We wanna feel these deep thoughts about God. And so music is about bringing ideas and emotion together in worship so that we get a full sense of what it means to be the human beings that God created us to be. We're not emotions gone wild where we just do whatever feels good and we just do what we like and feel the world and emotions as we want them, but neither are we just mere thoughts. We are just not robots who go around processing information. We are human beings and that means we are going to use both thought and emotion to express and relate to one another and that includes how we relate to God. Which brings us to the issue of habit or routines, because we don't just do them whenever we feel like that. As Christians, we have some pretty established practices where we get together, worship God at set times. And practice is like the important word here, because you don't get good at things. You don't actually establish real relationships or you don't actually develop depth in any field without any kind of practice. Like I come from the world of music, so I'm used to practicing piano. And there's nothing fun about practicing scales, but you have to do that to you know, achieve mastery in the instrument so that you can eventually play a song and join a bunch of people together and have the joy of that community. And in the same way as Christians, we get together and we go to you know, church, we gather in Sunday schools, we study the word, we worship together, we learn the words and languages of the gospel together so that when we scatter and go out in the world, we are taking that gospel in its fullest sense everywhere. We learn how to say, I love you. We learn how to say, you know, let's be at peace with our neighbor. We learn how to say, this is what the gospel's like. And we practice that we, when we gather together. We are practicing our faith. We are practicing worship so that we can do it in a bigger capacity outside of the church. So cultivating these habits are really important because we are creatures of habit. We do certain things in certain ways all the time. Even when I think about when I get up in the morning, you know, I always like, okay, I get up, I wash my face, I brush my teeth. Like I do things in a certain order and habits have the potential to form who we are. And it's because of this that we have to be careful that we are cultivating our habits in the right direction because we are prone to being idol worshipers, to cultivating habits in the wrong direction. And our world is full of that today. When you think of like the mall, the mall is a place where we cultivate habits of consumerism. You go to the mall and it shouts at you. You are defined by what you buy and what you can consume. We are habituated by the theater. We go to the movie theater or we go to plays or we go to concerts. And the point of that is to think about what you know, it means to be the center of attention, where I'm the center of the attention instead of God. And we long to be in that position and celebrate that. Or even going to the sports arena, where we celebrate human accomplishment and say, look at what human beings can do and their ability to just stretch themselves and achieve whatever they want to achieve. And again, that leaves God out of the picture. Uh, none of these things are bad in, in and of themselves, but at times our hearts can be so drawn into them that they become a priority and they slowly and subtly shut out God. And again, worship is where we come and renounce all of those idolatries, renounce all of those primary loves and routines and orient our heart toward God because we aren't as rational as we think. We need to practice these habits so they come out naturally in the world around us. So that when, you know, someone comes and cuts you off in traffic, you know, you don't have time to sit there and think, well, what would a Christian do in this case? What does the Bible say? You know, you, you don't usually respond like that. What happens is whatever is your first instinct comes out. And that could be to respond in anger and be, you know, what is with that guy? What's wrong with them in their day? That's not what a Christian should respond like. A Christian should, through the process of worship, you know, train their habits, train their heart responses so that they're like, oh, 
You know, that that person might be having a bad day. How can I pray for that person? What God, what are you doing in that person's life? They think outside of just themselves and their own reactions to that and think about how does this fit into the world and what is my actual response as a believer? And that you don't have time to think about it. It's just what comes out. Being uh, accustomed to worship, being a part of worship, building your habits and life routines around worship is gonna train your habits so that when you are faced with those like split second decisions in life, where you don't have time to think about it, what comes out is going to be a godly response. So at the end of it all, we just have to acknowledge that all of us are worshipers. The question is, whom or what are you going to worship? Are you gonna settle your heart on some of these lesser things in the universe, or are you gonna settle yourself on worshiping the true God, the creator, the one who made all things? Everything else is less worthy of our attention and can be just trivial, But also we should be aware that some of them are just downright evil. And God is the greatest and he is the one who should be all things to us and just as he is all things to the world. We are to know God and to delight in him forever. Just as Psalm 37, four says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart.